Hi guys and welcome to the next video of this entire series and in this particular video we will be discussing what is litigation hold and retention hold. If you have watched the previous session, in the last video we discussed what are retention tags and retention policies. We also discussed how retention tags work and we have discussed practically how you can enable retention policies on the mailboxes. In this particular video, I will be discussing what is litigation hold and retention hold, how litigation hold and retention hold work, and I will be showing you how you can enable litigation hold and retention hold on the mailboxes. Litigation hold is used to preserve the mailbox, the entire mailbox, or the contents of the mailbox. Let's assume that we have a user and he has a mailbox, and he has certain emails within his mailbox. Now, if a user deletes an email from his mailbox, that email goes to deleted items folder. Within deleted items folder, that particular email will stay for 30 days. If this user doesn't recover this email from deleted items folder within 30 days, that email will move to deletions folder. And within deletions folder, that email will be stored for 14 days. Now, as per the user experience, when he deletes an email, that email goes to deleted items. And from deleted items, that email goes to recoverable item folder, where that email stays for 14 days. But in backend, what happens? Deletions folder is a subfolder of recoverable items folder. So if any email is moved from deleted items, that email will go to deletions folder, and there it will stay for 14 days. Now, if this user doesn't recover that particular email within 14 days, that email will be purged and this user will not be able to recover that email. Even an administrator will not be able to recover that email if it is purged or if it is deleted from the deletions folder. Now, let's assume that we have enabled litigation hold on the mailbox and the duration that we have specified within litigation hold is one year or 365 days. Now let's see what will be the user experience or administrator experience if litigation hold is enabled on a mailbox. So now if user will delete an email, that email will go to deleted items folder. In deleted items folder, that email will be stored for 30 days. If user deletes this email from deleted items folder as well, that email will move to deletions folder and here, that email will store for 14 days. And let's assume that user has purged this email from recoverable items folder as well. In that case, this email will move to purges folder, which is another subfolder inside recoverable items folder. And once this email will move to purges folder, in this folder, this email will stay for the duration which is specified the time you enabled litigation hold on the mailbox. If you have mentioned one year for litigation hold duration, in that scenario, this email will be stored within purges folder for next one year. So now user will not be able to recover the email. However, an administrator can still recover the email within next one year. And administrator can use e-discovery tool or content search tool to recover this particular email. But for end user, this email has been purged. End user will not be able to recover this email. The other benefit of litigation hold is that you can preserve the entire mailbox within your organization. Let's assume that we have a user and he has a mailbox. And we have an administrator in our Office 365 tenant, or let's assume that we have two global admin accounts within our Office 365 tenant. And one of those administrators have deleted this mailbox. So when this mailbox will be deleted, this mailbox will be moved to soft deleted mailbox state. And the associated user account will be moved to deleted user state. Now this mailbox will stay for 30 days in soft deleted mailbox state. And the associated account will also stay for 30 days within deleted user state. The administrator has an option that he can recover this mailbox from soft deleted state, and he can even restore the user account as well. Now let's assume that this administrator has deleted this user account from deleted user state as well, 
that means this user account will be purged now if the user account is also purged the associated mailbox will be purged as well if you delete the user account from deleted user state this user account will be purged and the associated mailbox will also purged from soft deleted mailbox now let's assume that we have enabled litigation hold on the mailbox and the duration we have specified is 365 days or one year now if this administrator will delete this mailbox this mailbox will move to soft deleted state and the user account will also move to deleted user state where this account will be stored for 30 days and the mailbox will be stored for 30 days within soft deleted mailbox now let's assume that this administrator has purged this user account so this account will be permanently deleted however the mailbox will be moved from soft deleted state to inactive mailbox state within inactive mailbox state this particular mailbox will stay for one year or as per the duration which is mentioned within the litigation hold so if it is specified one year in that case for one year this mailbox will be preserved within inactive mailbox state that means this administrator still have access or still have option to recover this particular mailbox from inactive mailbox state. Now to recover the mailbox, administrator has three options. He can run PowerShell command to recover the complete mailbox, or he can use content search or e-discovery tool to recover or restore the contents of the mailbox. By enabling litigation hold on a mailbox, you can preserve the entire mailbox or you can preserve the mailbox contents for example emails or calendar items if a user will delete any item from his mailbox that email will be that email or calendar item will be moved to purchase folder within purchase folder that email or calendar item will be preserved for the duration which is mentioned within the litigation hold the administrator will have an option that he can restore that email or calendar item by using content search or e-discovery. In the same way, if the entire mailbox is under litigation hold, and if any administrator will delete the mailbox, that mailbox will be preserved within inactive mailbox state, even if the associated user account is purged. So the administrator will have option for using PowerShell content search or e-discovery and he will be able to recover that particular mailbox or he can recover the contents of the mailbox. We can manage litigation hold from Exchange Admin Center and from PowerShell. If we have to enable litigation hold from Exchange Admin Center, we will go to recipients and mailboxes. Within mailboxes, we will select the mailbox on which we have to enable litigation hold and then we will go to mailbox properties. Within mail mailbox properties, we will look for mailbox features and under mailbox features, we will look for litigation hold option. Here we can see litigation hold is disabled for user A mailbox. If you want to enable it, we will click on enable. And here we will mention the number of days for how many days this mailbox will be under litigation hold and then we will click save. Now, when you enable litigation hold on a particular mailbox, it may take a couple of hours to enable the litigation hold. So here it says the hold setting may take up to 240 minutes to take effect. So here you can click OK, and you will be required to wait for some time, and after that litigation hold will be enabled on the mailbox. To enable litigation hold from PowerShell, we can run command set hyphen mailbox, hyphen identity and then we need to mention the name of the user or the email address of the mailbox on which we are going to enable litigation hold then we need to use a switch which is litigation hold enabled and the value for that switch will be true dollar true the next switch we will be using is litigation hold duration and here we will be specifying the number of days for which this particular mailbox will be under litigation hold and then press enter here you will receive the same warning that we received 
in Exchange Admin Center that it may take up to 240 minutes to take effect. Now, if you would like to verify if litigation hold is enabled on user C mailbox or not, for that we will run command get hyphen mailbox user C pipe select hyphen object display name. litigation hold enabled and we will be using one more value or one more attribute which is litigation hold duration so here we will get details for user c that litigation hold is enabled and the litigation hold duration is 365 days if you would like to verify litigation hold status for all of the mailboxes within your organization, that can be verified by running get hyphen mailbox. Pipe. Select hyphen object and you, we can copy the same values from here. So here we can see the display name of all the mailboxes and here we can see the status whether litigation hold is enabled or not. Value true indicates that litigation hold is enabled. If it is false, that means litigation hold is not enabled. The duration is 365 days. Now if you do not specify duration, let's assume that you haven't specified number of days while enabling litigation hold. That means litigation hold will be enabled for unlimited period. To understand how retention hold works, let's assume that we have a user account and that particular user account has an associated mailbox. This user will be on leaves for next 20 days. That means this user will not have access to his mailbox for next 20 days. Now within these 20 days, this user will be receiving emails within his mailbox. Now if an administrator has enabled a retention policy or retention tag on this mailbox and the retention action is specified permanently delete and the retention period says seven days. That means the emails which are seven days older within this mailbox will be permanently delete. So within these 20 days, if this user will receive any email, user will not be able to read those emails when he will come back from the vacation. Because as per the retention tag, all the seven days old emails will be deleted permanently from this mailbox. In this scenario, as an administrator, we can enable retention hold on the mailbox. When we apply a retention policy on a mailbox, manage folder assistant start processing the mailbox and as per the action specified within the retention tag, emails will be moved to online archive or will be purged permanently. But in case of retention hold, when managed folder assistant will start processing the mailbox, it will check for retention hold first. If retention hold is enabled on the mailbox, managed folder assistant will not process that mailbox and it will bypass that mailbox. So that means if retention hold is enabled on a mailbox, retention policy will not take effect. We can come across scenarios where we are working on retention policies, but retention policy is not taking any action. So in those scenarios, we have to check if retention hold is enabled on that particular mailbox or not. Because if retention hold is enabled on the mailbox, managed folder assistant will not process that particular mailbox. Retention hold can be managed only from PowerShell. We cannot manage retention hold from Exchange Admin Center. If you want to enable retention hold on a mailbox, we can run command set hyphen mailbox hyphen identity. Here we will mention the name or the email address of the mailbox on which we want to enable retention hold. And we will be using a switch retention hold enabled. And the value will be dollar true. So this way you can enable retention hold for a particular mailbox. To verify the changes on this particular mailbox, we can run get hyphen mailbox hyphen identity user C pipe FL asterisk 
retention hold. So here we can see retention hold enabled value is true. That means retention hold is enabled on user C mailbox. In this particular session, we have discussed what is litigation hold and retention hold. And I have shown you practically how you can enable litigation hold and retention hold on the mailboxes. In the next session, I will be discussing the recipient permissions within Exchange Online. I will be discussing full access, send as, and send on behalf permissions. We will be discussing how these permissions work, and I will show you practically how you can enable these permissions from Exchange Admin Center and from PowerShell. So if you have learned something new from this particular video, please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. Thank you for your time. Take care.